Hi. In this video, we look at situations involving the accidental capture of cervids using snares. Snares set for wolf and coyote are the main reasons why moose and deer may be caught accidentally. Given that canids roam in the same types of habitat as cervids, the members of the deer family are at risk of being caught. Apart from being socially unacceptable, capturing deer, moose and other cervids accidentally is illegal and must be reported to wildlife conservation officers. The way to avoid this type of situation is to place the snares where cervids are not likely to travel and to use snare designs that would either prevent a cervid from being captured or would allow the animal to release itself unharmed. There are various systems used called breakaway devices as seen here, commonly called S-hooks because of their shape. Other types are also available such as J-hooks. The function of a breakaway device means that when we capture a cervid on the leg for example, if the animal is capable of exerting sufficient force, it will release or break away this device which is calibrated accordingly. And as you can see here, S-hooks have opened following the capture of cervids. The animal is then released without any injury and no part or component of the snare remains on the animal. In addition to using a breakaway device, you can also use a stopper that is crimped, as in the case of a wolf snare at about 10 inches. This will close around the animal's leg, leaving a space that will prevent tightening and allow blood to circulate around the animal's leg. Then the animal will be able to open the S-hook by using little more strength, so it's an additional element we can add as a snare component. So what you need to know is if you have a cervid capture, there are two situations. The animal is alive or the animal is dead. A trapper may consider releasing a white-tailed deer or a caribou. In the case of a moose, which is a much larger animal, it's recommended to contact the wildlife conservation officers who may intervene with other techniques for safety reasons. Another thing to consider in terms of a live capture, in the case of a moose, for example, is it a moose calf? If it's a moose calf, you still have to look around. If the female is present, there could be danger from the mother charging you. You really have to be careful not to intervene in this situation too quickly and assess the potential risks before attempting any action. There are two main types of accidental captures on cervids, around the leg or around the muzzle. Around the leg is really the best place for the breakaway device to work properly, such as an S-hook. The other capture situation is around the nose or muzzle. As these are very sensitive areas, the animal may not have enough strength to open the breakaway device. At that point, you really have to consider in more detail the type of capture to know how to proceed with the release. In addition to the breakaway devices or stoppers, which help the cervids to escape, we can also attach diverter wires to the top of our snare, which will keep the muzzle of a moose far enough from the snare. For example, from entering the snare, because of the heavy components of the assembly, the snare is triggered, falls to the ground and ultimately eliminates the risk of capture by the muzzle. Since the snare is closed, it's impossible for the animal to get its paw inside. In a live capture situation, another element to consider is the animal's condition. Does it allow us to free this animal? So if we don't see any major injuries, we can consider proceeding. At that point, you have to make sure you take a safe approach one of the most commonly used tools is the cable cutter. At that point, we make sure we're approaching the animal from behind an obstacle that will protect us. Always check the animal's behavior. Is the animal sitting calmly or is it trying to kick? Always watch the front legs, which are very dangerous, especially in the case of moose or deer. That's why the obstacle is important and where you cut the cable is important. You must cut the snare within the loop so that the animal does not get away with any part of the snare. Never cut outside the loop. In the case of lethal snares, which have a torsion spring, you need to cut the section between the two arms of the spring. If you cut it at that point, the animal is freed and no metal remains around the leg. This is very important as any snare left on the animal could block blood circulation. So this is the element to consider. If the captured animal is wounded but still alive, it is illegal to kill the animal. If the deer is dead when you arrive, it's important to take certain information for example, the location of capture site, ideally if you have a GPS, to take a coordinate so that you can transmit this information to the wildlife conservation officers.